get all this stuff out of the way. All right, let's get on with the video. Hey guys, it's Sam. Welcome back to The Blind Life. I thought today we would talk about this new TV show that features a world entirely inhabited by blind people. So I recently started watching this new show. It's called C, S-E-E, C. -E -E, it's an Apple original uh, show and it's already been, the first season's already out. I'm a little late to the game, honestly, but um, I'm, I really wanted to talk to you guys about it because it's actually really, really cool. Hey guys, so I thought real quickly I should probably introduce myself for those of you who are possibly, this is your first time on my channel and you'll know that my background and know that I do know what I'm talking about when it comes to the blind world. So I am 43, oh wait, actually 44. And I started losing my vision when I was about age 11. Um, I am partially sighted, legally blind. Uh, you know, I just identify as blind, I think, because it's easier that way. So I've lived with vision loss for a long, long time. I've also been around a lot of blind people. I graduated from a school for the blind in North Carolina. I was an assistive technology trainer for many years uh, where I taught blind people how to use assistive technology and how to basically be an awesome blind person. And I've had this channel on YouTube for six years now, which has allowed me to travel all over the country, meeting amazing blind people and interacting with them. So in that respect, I do know a lot about the blind world. All right, introduction's over. Let's get back to the video. Centuries from now, almost all humans have lost the ability to see. Some say sight was taken from them by God to heal the earth. For the few who remain, vision is only a myth. But after so many years, the power of sight has returned. What is it? Something's different. The children, they have the ability to see. And that's basically it. I'm not going to get into all the stuff that starts to happen. I, like I said, I don't want to spoil anything. But I wanted to touch on the fact that, man, they did a good job of portraying a world of blind people. Uh, it is clear that they definitely did their research because not all the actors are blind. There are some blind actors on the show, but I think the majority of the main actors are sighted, just portraying blind people, and they do a really, really good job. I'm just so impressed with how they approached everything. Like, even the very first uh, episode there's this battle between this tri these two tribes or these two groups of people. And, you know, normally when we see a battle in a movie or a TV show, you know, the armies are standing there facing off in a field and they're, they scream at each other and they run towards each other and they clash into each other and just start going at it and going to town. And, you know, that's normally how it is. But these, you know, you think about it. How would a blind army uh, attack each other. Now, number one, the show is just filled with little attentions to detail that just are so impressive. Like the main uh, chief or the leader of the one tribe, he is leading his army, right? Well, he can't just look around and make sure everybody's in place, so he's using audible cues. Uh, he'll, he'll, he'll do a chant, and then the entire army will reply in their, in whatever they're supposed to say, in their own little chant. Uh, and so that he can hear where they all are and know that they're good and they're ready and they're paying attention and all that. And they all have sticks. Everybody carries a stick around. And um, they're not canes. They are actually sticks. <laughs> and, you know, they're constantly tapping them and um, just, you know, giving each other audible cues as to what's going on. But like I said, these two armies are in this, this forest and they're about to attack each other. And they're basically both sneaking up on each other. 
And you know, it makes so much sense. And yeah, that's probably how it would be because you're listening and you can't just be running through the forest making a ton of noise because they're gonna hear you and you won't be able to hear them because everybody's making noise. So it's like they're sneaking up to each other until they get right on each other and then, then they start going at it. And even the fighting, you know, two people fighting, they clash a couple times and then they stop and they separate and they listen and then they go back in, you know, and it's just, ah, oh, it just makes so much sense. They did such a good job. And even the set design, you know, this village that they live in, uh, there's these ropes, this web of ropes suspended above their heads uh, that they follow. So, you know, when a, someone comes out of one of their huts, they immediately reach up and feel the rope or maybe with their weapon, their sword or whatever, they reach up and they tap the rope so that they kind of get their bearings and then they start walking. And every now and then they'll reach up and feel the rope and make sure they're in the right path and go in the right direction and all that. And it's like, ah, oh, that makes so much sense. <laughs> then there's the characters and the dialogue and the interactions with each other that is so spot on. I mean, when they're talking to each other, there's no sense of personal space. They're right up on each other speaking. And this is something that actually happens in the blind world. Personal space isn't so much a thing with people with profound vision loss because oftentimes they don't realize how close they are to someone and they do that on the show and you know once again it's just watching it's like yes that is exactly right they nailed that aspect of of blind life another thing i love is they're constantly using audio cues you know there's this queen this crazy crazy queen and she when someone comes in a messenger comes in to give her a message uh, which incidentally all the messages are knots on rope that's how they read they tie knots on rope and they can read that and it's really really cool cool idea but when someone comes to give her a message she has this arm full of jingly bracelets and chains and stuff so when she want, reaches out for the message she shake, constantly shakes her hand and her wrist so that it all jingles so the person knows where to hand the message and then if it's taking too long, she'll start to snap as another cue for another audible cue for that messenger or whomever to hand her the message or whatever. And it's just like, yes, that is so spot on. I love it. So incidentally, I think it's a fantastic show. Uh, it's, it's, if you're interested in it, it's post-apocalyptic. It's very nature. Like I said, the, uh, the majority of it is set out in the woods and then later on in this open field where they set up a, a, a village. Uh, I will say it is not for children. <laughs> it is definitely not a PG or PG-13. Um, this queen is just crazy and she has some scenes that are... You know, I was actually watching an episode on an airplane and on my iPad and I had to like, oh, okay, I maybe should hold that up so high so that other people can see it because this is not safe for work right now. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Uh, there's also language as well. Now, as good of a job as they did and as good of a job as the actors do, I mean, even the way they move, like I said before, uh, the main actor, the main chief, he... He, wa he walks around crouched a lot and they always walk a little sideways with like an arm out to brace in case they run into something. And, you know, once again, it's just like, yes, that is exactly accurate. Uh, but a couple times now I've watched maybe like four or five episodes and I've seen maybe twice that they kind of mess up and they do something that a blind person would not do. Uh, one scene I remember specifically, he, the, the main character guy, was walking through a river, like a creek bed, 
and he's walking along and he reaches out and absentmindedly touches a rock as he goes by to kind of help himself over a little spot. And it's one of those things, it's like he purposely touched the top corner of this rock, uh, whereas this was a brand new area, he'd never been there before, and he would not have known exactly where to touch that, uh, you know, if he had, if he were truly blind. But that's it, man. I was like, that and maybe one other small little thing I saw, I noticed, that kind of took me out of it and was like, oh, well, no, he wouldn't have done that. But other than that, they have been really, really spot on and accurate um, and absolutely no complaints. I mean, even like the little head tilts as they hear something and they're listening. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> they really did a great job. So that's it for this one, guys. Like I said, I just, I was excited about it and wanted to talk about it. Um, I hope you check it out. C-S-E-E. -E. As I said, season one is already out. Uh, if you have any questions, though, let me know. You want to talk about it in the comments, that would be awesome. Have you seen the show? And if so, what do you think? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Everybody's got an opinion, and that's awesome. You're entitled to yours. I really enjoy it, so that's mine. <laughs> but that's it for me, guys. As always, Sam with The Blind Life. Let me know if you need anything. Subscribe, like, turn on notifications, all that stuff, and I will see you next week.